Hello, I'm back again. Alright, so back with Form 4, Chapter 4, Heat. Alright, previously we talked about 4.1, Understanding Thermal Equilibrium. So today we're going to learn about 4.2, Understanding Specific Heat Capacity. So at the end of this particular video, you'll be able to define specific heat capacity, small c. Alright, state that C equals to Q over M theta. This one will go into it in a short while. Determine a specific heat capacity of a liquid and a solid. Describe application of specific heat capacity. And solve problems involving specific heat capacity. So, let's start. Heat capacity. Alright, heat capacity here is capital C. The amount of heat required to change its temperature by 1 degree. So, how much heat do we need in order to change the temperature by 1 degree? So, specific heat capacity with a small c is the amount of heat that must be supplied to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius for a mass of 1 kg of substance. So, over here, Please note the difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity can actually, we need to be specified when we mention the change in temperature for what. So over here, the heat that must be supplied or released to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius for a mass of 1 kg of substance. So this substance can be a uh, solid, liquid, or gas, it depends. So, from this particular definition, we can get the formula small c equals to q over m delta theta. So, SI unit for specific heat capacity is joule per kg per degree Celsius, where q is the heat absorbed or released in the unit joules, m is the mass of the substance in unit kg, and delta theta is the temperature difference in unit degree Celsius. The quantity of heat absorbed or lost by a substance, what does specific heat of aluminium 900 joule per kg per degree Celsius actually means? So if we relate this back to this formula, it means that 900 joule of heat is needed to be supplied to 1 kg of aluminium to produce a 1 degree Celsius temperature increase. So you need to, for 1 kg of aluminium, you want to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius, we need a heat energy of 900 joules. Let's try another one. What does specific heat of water 4200 joule per kg per degree Celsius means. All right, I noticed there's a small little error over here. It's supposed to be negative one. So it means that in order for one kg of water to increase the temperature by one degree Celsius, we need a heat energy of 4,200 joules. So what does this actually tell you? That in order to change the temperature for water, you need more energy compared to aluminum. Right, that's why water is not a good conductor of heat because it needs 4,200 joules of energy in order to increase the temperature from, let's say, 25 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. So that is what specific heat capacity actually means. All right, the meaning of specific heat capacity, the physical meaning. It means that when two objects of equal mass are heated at equal rates, which means they are supplied with equal amounts of uh, the rate of energy is the same, the object with smaller specific heat capacity will have a faster temperature rise, but when two objects of equal mass are left to cool down, temperature of the object with smaller heat capacity will drop faster. So the smaller specific heat capacity means that temperature will increase faster and it will drop faster if it has the same mass. So a substance with small specific heat capacity heats up and cools at a faster rate, example like iron, steel, copper, and aluminium are only used for pots and pans because they can be quickly heated up when there is only small heat absorption. So that's why we normally use these materials for pots and pans because it can heat up faster. 
All right. Small specific heat capacity are also sensitive to temperature changes. Like thermometer has low specific heat capacity so that it enables heat to be easily absorbed and released even when small quantities of heats are required. Substance with high value of specific heat capacity, it heats up and cools at a slower rate, requires more heat to rise its temperature by a specific amount, it's a poor conductor of heat, for example, the handle of a pot, and can absorb a great amount of heat without a high increase in temperature. For example, water acts as a heat reservoir as it can absorb a great amount of heat before it boils. Water is actually used as a cooling agent in a car radiator. So in short, specific heat capacity which is smaller is a good conductor of heat, heats up faster, and cools faster. It needs small, it uh, can absorb heat very small and it is very sensitive to the changes of temperature. But high specific heat capacity heats up and cools faster. You need more heat in order to raise the temperature. It is a poor conductor of heat and when it absorbs, uh, it can absorb a lot of heat but the changes of temperature is very, very small. So what is the daily application of using lower and higher specific heat capacity? Example, we have the pots and pans, iron, and also this is the motoring solder. So where is the high and low specific heat capacity? Higher specific heat capacity means they heat and cools down slower, needs more energy uh, more heat to increase and it is a poor conductor example the top of the handle here we have the plastic material of the iron and also we have this part of the soldering right lower specific heat capacity means that the temperature changes very fast you need a little bit of heat only the temperature will increase very fast so it's a good heat conductor so which which part does it use lower specific heat capacity the bottom of the pot, the ironing part, and this metal part because it needs to heat up faster, isn't it? Alright, another application of specific heat capacity, example, the cooking pot. Okay, first, the handle, large specific heat capacity so that the handle will not be too hot when heat is absorbed. It's a poor conductor of heat, so it's easy for us to hold it. The aluminium body need to have a relative low specific heat capacity so that the pots become hot quickly and easier to cook. Low density so that it's light and easy for us to move around. And it does not react to the food in the pot. The last part is the copper base. Copper base has lower specific heat capacity compared to aluminium. The pots becomes hot very quickly it enables quick cooking of the food in the pot. High density, it is supposed to be a heavier base and feel that the pot is stable and will not topple over easily. Alright, another example is the sea breeze. Okay, normally when we actually stand at the seaside, alright, during the daytime, you'll feel that the wind is actually coming from the sea. This is actually called the sea breeze. So we are going to explain in terms of heat, how does sea breeze actually occur? Alright, the land has smaller specific heat capacity compared to the sea which is consists of water. Temperature of the land will increase faster. Therefore, the land is warmer compared to the sea at daytime because the sea needs a lot amount of energy in order to raise the temperature. So the land would be hotter faster compared to the sea. So when the land is warmer, the air above the land is heated up and heated air will be low pressure, it will be moving to the top. Low pressure air will actually move above because lower density. So cooler air from the sea will move towards the land, cooler air over here will move towards the land, right? so that it becomes sea breeze. So this is actually how sea breeze actually happened.
Next is land breeze. Again, when we are standing at the seaside, facing the sea, we feel like the wind is blowing from the land towards the sea. So this is what we call as land breeze. So again, at night, heat is lost from the land and the sea. But because the land has low specific heat capacity, it releases out the heat faster, causing temperature to drop faster. But the sea, which is a high specific heat capacity, it is very difficult for it to release out the heat so far. So sea water at night is actually hotter or warmer compared to the land. So the sea is warmer than the land. So the warmer air above the sea, which is low pressure, will rise up and the cooler air from the land, which has higher pressure, will move towards the sea. Right, so from high pressure to lower pressure, that is the reason why cooler air from the land moves towards the sea as land breeze. So this is how actually we have the wind coming in from the sea and the wind going out from the land. So this is the sea breeze and the land breeze. Right, next, another question that loves to come out in the FBM. To determine the specific heat capacity of a solid or a liquid, so this is how we have, we have an aluminium block, we have this immersion heater that has a hole that allows it to heat up the aluminium block. We have one particular slot for the thermometer and we wrap it up with cotton wool so that the heat doesn't move out or escape to the surrounding and we put the asbestos to protect the table. Alright, first a block of aluminium of mass M, small symbol M. Initial temperature of the aluminium block before the immersion heater is uh, switched on is theta zero. Power supply used to heat it up for the immersion heater is capital P. Recorded time of heating using the heater. So the minute we switch on the heater, we start with a stopwatch and finally after a certain period of time, we stop it. So that is the recorded time of heating using the heater, small t. Final temperature of aluminium block is known as theta 1, which means after the heater has been stopped, that is the final temperature when thermal equilibrium is reached between the aluminium block and the thermometer. So that's theta 1. So in order to determine the specific heat capacity of the solid, we first need to understand that heat supplied from the heater for specific time is Q equals to Pt. That means the amount of heat supply, heat energy, is equivalent to the power supply multiplied by the recorded time. The heat absorbed by the aluminium block is using Q equals to mc theta, whereby theta is the change of temperature, so it's theta 1 final temperature minus initial temperature theta 0. From conservation of energy, heat supplied by the heater is equal to the heat absorbed by the aluminium block, so therefore, Power supply multiplied by the time recorded is equals to mc open bracket change in temperature close bracket. So this particular formula of conservation of energy applies with the condition that no energy is lost to the surrounding. That's the function of the cotton wool. Okay. So this formula you must remember: heat supplied by the heater, energy equals to power multiplied by the time is equivalent to the heat absorbed by the aluminium block, Q equals to mc theta. Alright, memory corner before we start some exercises. Specific heat capacity small he is the heat required for 1 kg of substance to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Specific heat capacity formula Q equals to mc theta is when the substance does not change, which means from water 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius water, right? but the temperature change. Water to water, solid to solid, or gas to gas. Right? Substance will not change, that's the meaning of it. All right. Higher specific heat capacity means that it heats up and cools at a lower rate. It's a poor conductor of heat and absorbs more heat without high increase in temperature. Lower specific heat capacity means it heats up or cools at a faster rate. It's a good conductor of heat and sensitive to temperature change. So please remember this particular slide. 
Alright, and one more thing. Lower specific heat capacity cannot store heat. Alright, there are a few exercises here. So I'm going to pick a few out of these five exercises. You can pause and try to copy the question down. But I'm going to go into the first exercise, question number one. Calculate the total heat that is absorbed by copper block of mass 500 gram, which a total heat absorbed by mass 500 gram, which has been heated from 31 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity of the copper is 390 joule per kg per degree Celsius. So the information that we get is the mass is 500 gram. But note here, because it's not in SI unit, I changed 500 gram to 0.5 kg. Change in temperature theta, 31 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. So I take the bigger value, 80 minus 31, I'll get 49 degrees Celsius. That's the change in temperature. And the specific heat capacity of the copper, small c, is 390 joule per kg per degree Celsius. So using over here, if you notice, the temperature changed, but the substance didn't change. So I use the formula Q equals to mc theta. M is 0.5 kg. C, 390, 390 joule per kg per degree Celsius. Change in temperature, 49 degrees Celsius. So once I've calculated this, this into the calculator, I get 9,555 joules. So simple as that. Change in temperature, we use Q equals to MC theta. Now let's try another question. When an electric heater is supplied to an electric power of 2 kilowatt to heat up 4 kg of water in 1 minute, Calculate the increase in temperature of water. Specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 Joule per kg per degree Celsius. Assume there is no heat loss to the surrounding. Now, how do we know that this is the formula using conservation of uh, energy? Because it states here, electric heater, electrical power of 2 watts for 1 minute. So this one is obviously power and this is obviously time. So the information provided, the power is P equals to 2 kilowatts. So I have to change it to scientific notation. 2 times 10 to the power of 3 watts. Mass M is 4 kg. Time is given 1 minute, but SI unit for time is in 60 seconds. So 1 minute equals to 60 seconds. Specific heat capacity of water, C is 4,200 joule per kg per degree Celsius. Again, this is already in SI unit. So we have to find for the increase in temperature. So from the formula, conservation of energy, heat energy release is equivalent to heat energy absorbed. Energy release is from the electrical heater. So that is PT, right? electrical energy. Energy absorbed is heat absorbed by the water. So PT equals to MC theta. So rearrange the formula, theta equals to PT over MC, why? We want to calculate the increase in temperature. So we let theta to be the subject, substitute power 2 times 10 to the power of 3, the time is 60 seconds, mass is 4 kg, and specific heat capacity is 4200. So using your calculator carefully, you'll be able to get that the change in temperature is 7.14 degrees Celsius. So it's very easy, isn't it? So make sure, remember, identify out the information, write out all the information that is given, find out what formula that you're supposed to use, put it as the subject, substitute the answers in, the values in, press your calculator carefully, and then you can get the final answer. Alright, simple as that. So that's the end of uh, subtopic 4.2, understanding specific heat capacity. I hope you can try to understand. If you have any questions, you can leave it at my comments. Alright, that's all. Thank you.